Okay, this is a sort of follow-up video to the gay marriage thing. I don't normally make videos on political topics or secular topics because really that's not what we're here for. But this is related to what I do for a living. And so what I might say might be more relevant or helpful. Okay. The issue here in the gay marriage thing is contractual law. Now you can look anywhere in the Bible that you want, starting in Genesis 2 at the end, and you'll see that God has his own ideas, which of course are the best ones, about what contractual law ought to be, and if you want happiness and prosperity and all the rest of it, you're going to follow his ideas. The idea of contractual law between a man and a woman called marriage was established at the end of Genesis 2 for the sake of the human race, and family comes out of it. Now, why is that so important? It stabilizes society. And every single society that's progressed or thrived did so because it had laws like that, where you got a man and a woman married, and the kids, and there's some kind of custom or ceremony for public recognition that that man and that woman are married to each other, the whole society recognizes it, so they have laws about it, and then the, the kids are the kids. And then there's inheritance law that comes out of it, liability law that comes out of it, all kinds of relationship laws that come out of it. Because what if somebody stumbles on your property? Okay, well maybe the property is owned by the husband, but isn't the wife liable too because she's married to the husband? Because if the husband shifted all of his assets to the wife so that he couldn't have anything to pay for the liability, you see the point? So this is why states end up having rights to say what constitutes marriage. Because there are all kinds of other laws in the society that are impacted by the relationships between parties. But they're all based on contract law. Contract law is between two parties. It's voluntary. And therefore, you and I will enter into it. Doesn't matter whether it's a personal agreement or a business agreement, but contract law means that when you and I enter into an agreement, the terms of that agreement were both obligated under the terms of that agreement that we voluntarily made with each other. That's the heart of this. And in the ancient world, and of course, it's all it's all sourced in in what God says too, because he made this law for the human race. When two people make an agreement with each other, they're bound by the terms of that agreement, and there has to be some sort of public way to express that that agreement exists so that the society knows that that agreement exists, even if it's a private agreement, all right? that the society respects that there are such things as contractual agreements between parties, private or public, and that there is some sort of arbitration that can go on in case of breach of those contracts. All right? Which means that you need an arbitrator, usually a judge, so that if one party in the contract feels aggrieved that its contract is not obeyed, that it has some kind of recourse. All right. Even in a private agreement, there's usually some clause in the contract that says, hi, if you got a dispute over how to execute this contract or fulfill this contract, you have this, 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 and this that you can do about it. And then the state itself has authority to say what rights it has to adjudicate contracts. It's real important to the whole integration and fit of society. Now, in all contract law, and that's definitely true in the Bible too, when a society comes up with its own ideas, its own rules, its own contracts, that's, as it were, the whole society has contracted together 
to observe those rules together in its own society. God shows that he respects those rules, even if they don't agree with his own standards. David had a lot of wives. God only set up one man, one woman. But God respected the fact that David had a lot of wives. David contracted with those women as lesser legal status concubine or as a wife, which was Bathsheba. And he had to obey all those contracts. They had an obligation. He had an obligation. And God respected that. Abimelech in Genesis 20 had his own version of that. And Abimelech wasn't even a believer, at least not until God sent him a dream. And his own version, he was a king, and he set the rule that he could take any woman he wanted if she wasn't married. So, Sarah must have been a real looker, honey. Because at 90 years old, boy, oh boy, Abimelech wanted her. And Abraham, in order to avoid getting killed, he thinks he has to lie about it and say that Sarah is his sister. So Abimelech takes Sarah as his sister, as his wife, part of a harem. You read all about it in Genesis 20 yourself. God comes and visits him during the night and says, Honey, you touch that girl, you're a dead man. I love the way God talks. <laughs> then he says, oh, wait a minute, Lord. He calls him Lord. Okay. I didn't touch her. I didn't know she was married. See, he's already God. And he set a standard in his own polity for what constitutes legal marriage. And he's taking advantage of it as a king, what rights he has as a king. And he's restricting himself, saying he can't take somebody else's wife. <clears throat> and he must, she must have been there for a while because the punishment was that nobody in Abimelech's household was able to bear kids. That's at the end of the chapter. So you see, God is respecting the societal rules that are set. Their own rules, their own customs. So contract law is voluntary between two parties and then they obligate themselves by the terms. Whether those terms are right or wrong is beside the point. You enter into a contract with somebody else, you're obligated to follow those terms. And the state and the courts are a source of recourse voluntarily, or sometimes they have the right to interpose. It depends on the state. It depends on the polity. It depends on the kingdom. Okay. And those have been rules from time immemorial and time and time again. In the Bible, God shows that he goes by those rules, even if they're not his standard. And so, therefore, you have in the New Testament, Romans 13 through 15, the state has a right to make the rules at once. And you also have the right, because <clears throat> it's a contract between God and you, to decide how you're going to live your spiritual life. Right or wrong. You got the Bible to tell you what right and wrong is, but it's up to you how you read it. Okay? And you're going to get the consequences of your interpretation, too. All right? And that's because, you know, as, as you hear me say so often, we're all in training to be kings. So there are, that's where 1 Corinthians 3 comes in, you know, the rewards and all that stuff. How well did we you learn and live on Bible down here? That's the big report card test that we're all going to face, you know, when the rapture happens. Okay. Meanwhile, the same thing is true of the human race. Everybody in the human race has the right to make whatever kind of contract it wants, right, wrong, or indifferent. The state has the right to rule, make the rules it wants, right, wrong, or indifferent, whether that state is run by a king, by a parliament, by you know communism, by uh, democracy, by representative government, by socialism, whatever the form of government is, that's the form, and those are its rules. And you don't like those rules, you move with your feet if you can. You're not supposed to, like, revolt or rebel, all right? The problem we had in the American Revolution is that the legality of the government here 
the, the British really didn't have a government of us. Okay, so it was a question as to what was the real legal right authority, and that's why you have the Continental Congress and all that other stuff going on. American Revolution, blah, blah, blah. You didn't have duly constituted authority here on, on this continent. Okay, but that's kind of beside the point. What I'm trying to say is you got contract law is, even with the state, it's essentially an agreement between whatever was called the state and the people that these are going to be our rules. God respects those. That's what Romans 13 is about. You make your own rules. That's what Romans 14 is about. And you're liable for them between you and God. <clears throat> and then Romans 15, the strong bear the weaknesses of the weak and all. You know, how do you manage the interplay? Okay, so I'm sorry about this long-winded introduction, but what it's helping me, I'm trying to get a fix in my mind. Uh, well, what should I do about this gay marriage thing if it comes up for a ball? And I think the position I'm going to take is that it's a contract. It is not like a law legalizing marijuana. Okay? A law that legalizes a drug is basically approving that drug. In, our, in the United States, anyway, I can't speak for other nations. In the United States, when the drug is legalized, there is an implicit statement in that, especially because we have the FDA. There is an implicit statement in that that the drug, being legal, is safe at some level to take. Even if it's, you know, got restrictions on it, like you've got to consult your doctor, even prescription drugs. For In the United States, in order for a prescription drug to be allowed as a prescription drug, that is a kind of approval by the federal government that it can even be a prescription drug. And a lot of drugs that used to be legal here aren't anymore. Even so, as a prescription drug, in order to get it legally, you have to go to a doctor and he has to prescribe it in a certain dosage. Okay, well, with marijuana, if you legalize it, then you have to have all those parameters to it, and there's not, not enough to say that there is a safe level. Okay, but that's not the same kind of legalization <clears throat> when it comes to marriage. Marriage is simply, I mean, when, the, when two people are legally married, the state merely recognizes the contract made between the two people. The contract is made between them. It's voluntary. It's personal. They are making a contract about obligations that they have before whatever spiritual law they're living under, but also before the state. Because if you're husband and wife, you're both earning a living, you're making an income, you have property, how should that property be divided? Who owns the property? What if you split up? What kind of liability is there is, like I said earlier, if uh, there's property owned by the husband, somebody trips on the property and it's really that the property owner's fault, well, you know, he could get out of paying damages if he just transfers all of his assets to his wife. So shouldn't the person who's wrong have recourse to the wife? Well, then what's the wife? You see the point? So contract law between two persons can be any kind of contract they want. It does it's not the state is not approving of their contract. It's recognizing there is one. You see the difference? Joe Blow marries Jane Doe. It's the stupidest idea on the planet. He should never marry her or she should never marry him. Dead wrong that they should get married. But they have a right. The state recognizes that they are married. That's not the state approving them being married. See, if the state legalizes a drug, at least in the United States, it's saying it's giving implicit approval to the drug at some level, on some basis of usage. But a state recognizing that a marriage exists because the two people made that contract is not an approval of the marriage. It's saying, yes, there is a contract. The two parties are attesting that they made this contract. They are therefore bound by the contract. So when you think about it that way, if a guy 
and another guy want to call themselves married. No matter how repugnant the rest of us might find that, they, before God and before the law, have a right to make any kind of contract they want. I mean, God doesn't approve of all marriages, but once you make the contract, you're stuck with it. That's definitely a Bible doctrine. Okay, he obviously doesn't approve of gay marriage, because he doesn't approve of sex between anybody but a man and a woman who are married to each other at the time. So all sex that isn't like that, any kind, is wrong, even if you're doing it to yourself. Okay? So he's not going to approve of gay marriage, but at the same time, if they make a contract together, why shouldn't the state recognize it? Because they're the ones who are making the contract with each other. They should be bound by that contract. Now, then that gets you into a whole other kettle of fish. Well, would they have the right then to adopt children and, you know, all the other things that you get into? But to sit there and say that they don't have a right to make a contract with each other, when that's a native human right that the Bible grants and you live with the consequences of your decision, I don't see how a Christian can justify saying that that's not allowed. It's not an approval. That's the key here. At first, when I made the other video, I was thinking, well, is it an approval? And the answer is no. A marriage contract is never an approval by the, by the entity that allows it. It's never an approval. It's a recognition. All contracts, the issue with contracts is, do you, does a contract exist or not? What are its terms? That's not an approval of a contact, contract by the state. It's not an approval of a contract by God. It's a recognition that, okay, you bind yourself to these terms with somebody, whether it's a sales contract, an auto contract, um, a joint venture, whatever you want to call it. Hi, you and I will be friends. We're going to write down a contract about our friendship. I will do this and you will do that. I don't know why two people would do that, but it's been done. Well, then why can't two men as repugnant as that is to me, why can't two men or two women write up what they call a marriage contract between each other and have it be respected by the state? It's a contract. They should have a right to make one. So I guess that's where I'm at with it. If you think I'm wrong, tell me why.